Top 10 Most Ruthless Mafia Mob Bosses Mafia is an Italian word meaning family, used in the United States by Italian immigrants to describe their criminal organizations. Mafia members are known as mafiosi. They're usually involved in organized crime, drug trafficking, and racketeering. The mafia is made up of many different families and clans, each with their own territory and boss. Each family has its own set of rules that they live by, and these rules are enforced by violence if necessary. At number 10, we have Jack Drogna, Los Angeles mob. Anyway, he controlled the Lincoln Heights area. You have Boyle Heights, you have Lincoln Heights. And the Lincoln Heights area was, was basically an Italian enclave, and it was run by Joe Drago. And so he was always in clashing with Mickey Corn, who was the Jewish gangster who ran Boyle Heights. As a result, uh, Mickey Corn won out. And he, you know, in those days, the, the big thing was bookies, you know, gambling. Off track to gambling was a big thing. This is where mobster uh, Jack Dragna died of a heart attack. February 23rd, 1956. He uh, checked himself in here under a different name and he died in his sleep, wearing his pajamas. He, of course, was in a uh, mob war with uh, Mickey Cohen at the time, and he had been uh, the head of the mob since the 1930s. Jack Drogno was known as the Al Capone in the West. He was a Sicilian born who came to America at an early age. He resided in Brooklyn before returning to Italy where he joined the Sicilian Mafia before returning back to America. In 1931, Drogner replaced Joseph R. Dizzoni as boss of the Los Angeles crime family. It was rumored that Drogna participated in R. Dizzoni's disappearance. It is said that the American Mafia supported Jack Drogna over R. Dizzoni. Drogna ruled the LA mob with an iron fist. He murdered anyone who threatened his business dealings or disrespected his family. His choice of killings consisted of bombings and high-powered rifles. Drogna's crew of mobsters were some of the most brutal in Cos Anostri history. At number 9, we have Joseph Iopa, Chicago Outfits. Looking at that man, you looked at death. There was nothing nice about him. Nothing. There was a saying going around, if you wanted to whack somebody, put a hit on him, go to Joey Ayupa, if he was the boss at that time. This guy would okay a ham sandwich to get whacked. He was a very dangerous, scary man. You got to remember, he comes from Al Capone. You know, in the house, you could feel it the, in the air. You don't want to fuck with this guy. Never smiles. You know, oh, mean man, mean man. He'll kill somebody. He'll have somebody kill somebody that may have said the slightest wrong thing or done the slightest wrong thing. That's Joey Ayupa, most feared guy around. A young Joseph Ayupa rose through the ranks of the Chicago Outfit Mafia in the 1920s. He started off as a driver for Outfit boss Tony Accardo. From the 1940s to the 1960s, Ayupa was in charge of the Cicero district of the Chicago Outfits. Joey Iopa gained full control of the Chicago outfits in 1975. After the death of Sam Giacana, Iopa was quiet and didn't smile much, but he was an intimidating figure. He moved to the beat of his own drum only taking hits when it benefited him or the Chicago outfit. At number eight, we have Salvatore Maranzano, Bonanno family. When Maranzano became the boss, he did something smart. He was the one that made up the five families of New York. He did it. Maranzano did it. He also assigned a boss of that family. He assigned an underboss, a consigliere, a capo regime, and a soldier. And he said in order to be a made member of that life, you had to be Italian, fully of Italian descent. Changed during my era, only your father had to be Italian. But it was Maranzano that did all of that. Your first hero. That's right. Was Salvatore Maranzano. Maranzano. Yes. But then you say he was said to be able to snap a man's neck with his fingers. And I say when I read that. That's a metaphorical. Well, uh, it's, it's quite a metaphor. Well, <laughs> it's quite a metaphor. He also told you this. Man is the hardest animal to kill. When you aim at a man, your hands shake, your eyes twitch. Your heart flutters, but you kill nonetheless. 
Amici! Amici! What do we come to celebrate? 20 pills in Joe Masseria's gut. <laughs> Kingdoms rise. Kingdoms fall. Pretenders reach for the throne, but only Caesar can rule. And the pretenders fade away. What does it all mean? In the words of Marcus Aurelius, the universe is change. Our life is what our thoughts make it. And my thoughts are these. Everybody in this room is going to get rich. Maranzano moved from Sicily to the United States in the 1920s. He settled in Brooklyn. The Sicilian boss on Vito Ferro sent the fearless gangster Maranzano to seize control over mafia operations in the United States. To protect his criminal empire, Maranzano declared war on the boss of all bosses, Joe Masseria, in 1930, starting the Costa La Marese War. Lucky Luciano decided to team up with Maranzano secretly to take out his boss Joe Masseria. Maranzano is known for scheming and being a brutal boss. His main goal was to be boss of all bosses, but he was murdered in 1931. The Maranzano crime family turned into the Bonanno family. At number seven, we have Sam Giacana, Chicago Outfits. Sam Momo Giancana, the Chicago crime syndicate chieftain recently named in a reported CIA mafia plot to assassinate Fidel Castro, has been shot to death. Police called it the biggest hit since the killing of Albert Anastasia and Bugsy Siegel. Giancana started as a driver and enforcer for Al Capone in the 20s. In the 50s, he led a group of young bloods in a syndicate takeover. When the shooting stopped, Sam Momo Giancana was at the top, chief of the Chicago crime organization. Giancana enjoyed high living, fancy restaurants and show people like Frank Sinatra and longtime sweetheart Phyllis McGuire. As a teen, Giancana was a part of the 42 gang. His known reputation with this gang gained him attention from Chicago Outfits. He joined the Chicago Outfits in 1930. He rose in the gang quickly. From the 1940s to the 1950s, Giacana controlled the illegal gambling, illegal liquor distribution, and political rackets. John Acana was allegedly involved in the JFK assassination and plotted to kill Fidel Castro. Besides many high-profile murders he orchestrated in Chicago, he was easily tempered. A Venice boss, he maintained his tough street role. Sam Giacana was murdered in 1975. At number six, we have Vincent Gigandi, Genovese family. This is News Channel 4 at 11. Vinny the Chin Gigante, he's said to be one of the most powerful mobsters in America. His lawyers say he's insane, but tonight it appears Gigante will finally be brought to justice. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Watkins. Chuck is off. The mob may be about to take a big hit. It's a story you'll see only on News Channel 4. It is all but certain that a federal judge will rule tomorrow that Gigante is sane, was sane, and is competent to stand trial. The boss of all bosses in the American mafia will have to answer to murder and racketeering charges. News Channel 4's John Miller reports. While the judge's opinion is still sealed, FBI agents are making contingency plans to rearrest Giganti on charges he's been able to sidestep by using his mental illness, an illness that prosecutors have claimed is an act. It's worked for him for 20 years. Hopefully it's not going to work for him much longer. Charles Rose, a former prosecutor, developed the original indictment of Giganti, charging him with being the boss of the Genovese crime family, the chairman of the mob's commission, and the man who arranged to have mobsters who broke the rules of La Cosa Nostra killed. One alleged plot involved plans to bump off John Gotti. Giganti has been able to avoid going to trial because a host of psychiatrists have testified that the wan figure who stares blankly and wanders the streets in a blue bathrobe was mentally disabled. But a host of mob informers, including Sammy the Bull Gravano, have said that they had regular dealings with the Chin as a mob boss. 
Excuse me, sir. He was meeting late at night in garages and in social clubs and in limos and on the street and giving orders, giving orders to run the family, to commit murders on behalf of the family. Someday soon, Mr. Giganti will be in a court of law and he'll have to answer the charges against him. Vincent G. Gandhi was sentenced to seven years in prison for drug trafficking in 1959. G. Gandhi shared a cell with Vito Genovese and was appointed capo of his own crew who operated in Greenwich Village in Manhattan. He rose to power in the 1960s and 1970s. Vincent G. Gandhi became the family boss in 1981. He was very secretive and a serious boss. He claimed insanity to confuse FBI agents. G. Gani was referred to as Chin because he didn't like his counterparts saying his name. Many gangsters claimed you had to walk around eggshells when around G. Gani. Any mistakes and he would have you murdered. At number 5, Kamai and Galante, Bonanno family. Galante was at Joe and Mary's luncheonette in the Bushwick section of Brooklyn. Four masked men armed with automatic weapons pulled up outside. Minutes later, Galante and two others at the table were dead and a fourth person seriously wounded. The gunman escaped. He was born in East Harlem, New York, and began his career as leader of a juvenile gang. In all, he spent 25 years in prison, but he rose steadily through the mafia ranks, from enforcer to chieftain. Along the way, according to authorities, he's believed to have killed or ordered the killing of about 100 men. Galanti's legal front was a dry cleaning shop in New York's Little Italy, but his real interests embraced gambling, prostitution, loan sharking, and most of all, heroin and other drugs. In the 1940s, Galante was a hitman for Vito Genovese, the underboss for the Luciano crime family. Galante was a vicious, violent man and was suspected of over 80 murders. In 1976, Galante was appointed as acting boss. In the 1970s, Galante was suspected of killing eight members of the Gambino family, fighting over a massive drug operation. He was feared but very well liked by his peers. He was also characterized as ruthless and greedy. Galante was murdered in Brooklyn, 1979. 